invite all of our guests to take a seat and ask Reverend Williams, the Dean of Chapel, to come lead us in a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Lord, in whose presence our souls take delight, grateful for another time of living and breathing, of inhaling and exhaling, all of whom are reminders that you've given us another day of above ground. We're grateful for life, and we pray that you help us never to take the precious gift of life that you have given us. Now we pause to pray for victims of Hurricane Ida, for the devastation in Afghanistan, for those who have died from COVID, those who are wrestling with the virus even now. And we pray that you keep us healthy and strong. Now, we lift before you this incoming class of students. Cover them with your hand and your grace. Preserve them with your mercy and your love. And as always, we pray for safety of President Rail and his family and all of the faculty and staff that comprise this place called Paul Quinn College. Guide us this year, navigate us through difficult times. Keep our students safe. And we ask it all in your matchless, never changing, unequivocal name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Williams. Good evening. Thanks, that was rousing. That was great. Good evening. Oh, so close. That's good. We'll work on it. My name is Dr. Chris Dowdy. I'm the Vice President of Academic Affairs and your host for this program. Thank you, Advanced, for sil silencing your phones so we can enjoy a noise-free event. I want to remind you that uh, everyone in the room is required to keep their masks on at all times. The speakers will take their mask off briefly uh, to share and then uh, return their masks to their faces. This is for everyone's safety. I will call at this time to order the opening address and welcome ceremony for fall 2021. Please join me. So I say a special word of prayer on behalf of all these new students. Students, please rise. Let's pray. Dear God, all the stories we are taught confirm for us that bad things are afoot in your good creation. Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, Noah in the time of the flood, Esau trading his birthright for a pot of stew. These stories tell us that some of your children have taken the good gifts you've given and made a mess of our land, our work, our cities, our love and tenderness. What you meant for a common good, they made into a selfish wreckage, a ruthless world. The roads have been broken, the walls against the wind, the threat were breached long ago, and now small people every day take big stages in the ruins and tell us crumbs are the very best we can expect. And we should call the crumbs greatness, and we should call the ruins freedom. Well, God, here in this place, when we pass that bell, we remember the stories of people freed from chains by war and blood and their own genius, and we sit up straighter. We see the blacksmiths and seamstresses, the preachers and grammar school teachers, the black middle class in Waco, beat down, shut out, redlined, exhausted. Nonetheless, these people walked off the plantations and built this college, and when they did that, they built a house with many rooms, a better world, while they worked for a better freedom. Now, God, we come to these gates. And they ask us, in this place, what will we build? What will we, what will we build, God? What will we make of our land, our work, our cities, our love and tenderness? What good will we build in common? Find favor with us, God, with these students. Those with faith in you, with faith in another, with faith in nothing at all. 
Answer the prayers of mothers and uncles, the lengthy and devout, and those that are barely more than curses, all of which are precious to you. Make us all makers, creators along with you. Make smooth the jagged streets. Rebuild the ruined houses. Repair the breaches against the wind and rain. Ring the bells in us and call this heartless world to a better freedom. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Please be seated. It is my privilege tonight to introduce uh, the speaker for this evening, the next person on the program, the longest serving president in the history of Paul Quinn College. In time people build CVs and resumes and reputations, he has built an institution alongside all of us, and for that we're grateful. He's one of the world's 50 greatest leaders, according to Fortune Magazine, the only three-time recipient of the HPCU Male President of the Year Award. Time Magazine listed him as one of the 31 people changing the South. He's a recipient of both the Dallas Bar Association's Dr. Martin Luther King Justice, uh, Junior Justice Award and the City of Dallas's Father of the Year Award. Distinguished Alumni Awards from Duke at the University of Pennsylvania's Graduate School of Education, honorary degree from Oberlin, all the places he's gone, love him back. When I first started at Paul Quinn, President Sorrell uh, set me down on the first day and we talked through what was gonna happen and he reminded me, Chris, these students deserve to win. That is why we're here. And I want you to understand that that's how all of us get in the building. That's how all of us get on the team, is we're people that are screened for that belief. We believe in you, sometimes more than you believe in yourselves. We believe in more for you than you've imagined for yourself. That's true of every one of us who's a part of the college. I never know what Prez is going to say in any given meeting. It's true. Any given talk. But I do know who he is. And I'm honored to share the stage with him and with you tonight. President Sorrell. Good evening, Quinites. We're going to do a little bit better than that. Good evening, Quinites. It is indeed an honor to stand here before you today in our first official capacity at Paul Quinn College. I know that because things are a little different, you have already started your classes. In years before, we wouldn't have done this before you started your classes. But yet and still, this is still our welcome to you on behalf of the institution, to the faculty and staff, to the alums that are present, to everyone that works awfully hard to make this institution what it is. Uh, on behalf of them, I welcome you as well. I, I want to talk to you today about something a little different than I've ever spoken to other entering classes about. Because I had an experience yesterday that has fundamentally changed me. I sat yesterday and watched a good friend of mine bury their oldest child. Their oldest child was 23 years old. And he died of an accidental drug overdose because he could not let go of his pain from yesteryear. His pain from yesteryear kept coming back and ruining the promise for tomorrow. I listened to his parents over the years talk about how deeply they loved him, how they tried everything, and nothing seemed to be able to soothe the pain in his soul. The pain that was opened up from a childhood experience overshadowed every wonderful thing in his life. And I listened to his younger brother and sister talk about what their brother meant to them. I listened to his parents eulogize their son. I sat there knowing what that pain looked like because I saw it in their faces. And then it made me think about you. And it made me think about us. And it made me think about what our charge is here in this moment 
of time together. All of you have come to us with something that has troubled your water. All of us have something that has troubled our waters. We have pain that we struggle to heal from. I remember every day the pain that it felt like to lose my mother. The pain that it felt like to lose the loved ones in my life who believed in me before I could believe in myself. Who fought fights for me before I was able to fight them for myself. And so for the rest of the time that we're going to be here together and I'm going to be in front of you, I want to talk about our charge as Quinites. Our charge as Quinites is to help push you past this moment in time. It is to help push you past whatever you have come to us with that is going to somehow keep you from being everything that we believe you can be. Because you see, I know a lot of your story. Because I have listened to people tell me your story. Some of you are from places where I have friends who have sent you here. Some of you have shared your stories with staff members, and they have shared the stories with me. So let me tell you what we're going to do together while you are students at Paul Quinn. We are going to win. Say it with me. We are going to win. Now, humor me and say it like you actually believe it. All right? Again, we are going to win. All right, we're going to have to work on your rousing answers and <laughs> callbacks. Understand this. We are an institution filled with people who only understand how to fight. You are students at an AME school. The AME church was born off of the idea that black people should be treated with a certain amount of dignity and respect and they fought for that during a time where people didn't fight back that way. The first members of the AME church were pulled off their knees when they were just simply trying to worship. And the AME church, the DNA of the AME church and the students who come to AME schools, that DNA is filled with the ability to fight. So let's talk about how we help you fight. We help you fight, number one, by believing in you. We believe in you. Now, believing in you means we are going to challenge you. We are going to push you. We are going to fight for you. We are going to demand that you do more than you have ever done before. That comes first in your courses. Our expectation is that you academically succeed. I don't care what anyone has told you before if it has left the belief that you cannot succeed academically. You can. I believe that everyone here is capable of making A's. I believe that everyone here is capable of doing amazing things. I'm not concerned for whatever shortcomings you had before. Because those shortcomings do not define you. They do not define us. They will not define our time together. You will be great. That is the standard, that is the expectation, that is our challenge to you. Become great. We are here to help you be great. So number one, you are going to excel academically. Number two, you are going to excel in the work program. The work program is not designed just to help us run the college. The work program is designed to give you an avenue, to give you a window into the rest of your life to who you can be. So we need you to believe, we need you to work hard at preparing yourself for these opportunities. Because we believe that you can do them and that you will excel. Number three, we're going to teach you the discipline necessary to excel. We have rules here. The first rule is the dress code. The dress code. The expectation is that you comply with because we're preparing you for careers where whether you like it or not, there will be some rules that you're going to have to adhere to if you want to excel. 
Now you can look at it and say, well, I, you know, I don't really know if I want to go to a place that's going to make me dress up. Come on now. We all dress up for something. We either dress up for church. Many of you are athletes. You dress up to compete. So you're going to have to dress up for something. We are here to teach you what that looks like and how to excel with it. We are going to teach you the institutional values. We believe in a code. The code is very, very simple. The first code is we over me. The needs of a community supersede the wants of an individual. You don't get to be selfish at Paul Clay College. Right? We exist to fight the fights for communities that need us. We exist to do something bigger than what we want for ourselves. So you're going to be asked to make sacrifices. Sacrifices that you may look at and say, why does that have to apply to me? Maybe it doesn't, but it applies to the we. So we will sacrifice our wants for the good of the whole. That's what we do here. Secondly, we have another set of values. The four L's of Quinai leadership. We believe in leaving places better than we found them. We believe in living a life that matters. We believe in leading from wherever we are, and we absolutely believe in loving something greater than ourselves. These are more than just words to us. You have to embrace them if you are going to succeed at Paul Quinn College. Otherwise, you will never get it. You may be a student, but you will never be a Quinnite. And you won't understand how Quinites walk, you won't understand how Quinites talk unless you buy into those principles. Now we have a character test. We believe that you have to choose the harder right over the easier wrong without apparent regard to self-interest. Again, reinforcing this idea that you don't get to be selfish here. It is easy to make the right decisions when everyone is looking at you. It is much harder to make those decisions when you can get away with the wrong. And getting away with the wrong might advance your cause temporarily. But that's not what we do here. We make our choices based on what is actually the right thing to do. Now we also have uh, another philosophy. And we believe that you can be our kind without being our color. You are going to have some brothers and sisters who are Quinites that are not black. There is no rule that says all Quinites are black. In fact, 20% of Quinites are Latino. And another two or three percent are Anglo. We don't care what color you are here. We care whether or not you subscribe to our values, whether you believe in this culture. And if you do that, then it's all love. But many different shades excel here. The last three valedictorians have been Latino. The last two Miss Paul Quinn's have been Latino. Right? I don't care what color you are on the outside. None of us do. Right? It doesn't mean we don't ride for our culture. It doesn't mean we're trying to sell out our culture. It means we are so secure with our culture that we can share our institution with others without thinking that it diminishes us. Right? It's the mark of insecure people that hold things like this. And we are not insecure people. Now, many times here you're going to hear people talk to you about dreams. They're going to ask you, what are your dreams? They're going to talk about expanding your dreams. Your dreams are the gateway to your soul. You must be able to stand up, declare your dream affirmatively for all to hear without being worried about whether or not someone is going to think less of you. No, your dreams are everything. We exist to help you achieve those dreams. I will tell you one of my dreams. One of my dreams right now is that all of you excel. That all of you, that the group I am standing looking here now, that I will be standing looking at them when it's time for them to graduate. I don't want to lose a single person who is sitting here right now. So we're all going to have to be accountable to each other. We are all going to have to lean on each other. And we are going to have to open our mouths which brings me to the last culture piece here. Closed mouths do not get fed. As I sat there watching that funeral yesterday, 
I thought about what it meant for my friend that his son kept his mouth closed far too often. He did not share everything that was going on. He could not let go of what was going on. We can't help you if you don't let us. We cannot speak to your pain. We cannot minister to your pain. We cannot love you through your pain if you don't let us know what that pain is. And you may not have it today, but at some course during our relationship, you may. And we're going to need you to be open about that. None of us are going to think less of you. Give us a chance to be who we're supposed to be. So this is a relatively short speech. I'm not here to talk all night. We have other things to do. We have business to take care of. I am simply here to frame this experience for you. I am looking forward to getting to know you. I'm looking forward to getting to know more of your story. I'm looking forward to seeing the greatness that lies within you. But you are going to have to meet us halfway. And if you do that, we can do amazing things together. So I thank you for the honor of being your college president. I thank you for believing in Paul Quinn. I thank you for giving us a chance. I thank you for believing that this can be something more in your life, that your life can be something more. Because whether you realize it or not, you have already changed. Now, there are going to be a couple tough times. You're going to think about maybe you want to go home because home seems comfortable. But you can't go back home. Whether you realize it or not, home will never be the same because the home that you had when you left won't look the same when you go back. Because if you go back without your college degree, you have gone back a college stopout. In some cases, a college dropout. That changes you. Finish the journey you have begun. Let's finish that journey together. Now, at this point in the program, my job is to bring back or to introduce you to Dr. Grant. So I'm going to tell you a brief story about Dr. Grant. Her title is the Chief Administrative Officer. She's had lots of titles here at Paul Quinn. She's been the Dean of Education. She's been the Vice President of Academic Affairs. She even has some title of VP of Institutional Programming. We were trying to figure out, you know, that was a short-lived title. But if you really want to understand Dr. Grant, you need to understand how deeply her love for this institution is. Now, she is a Grambling alum. She's a Grambling Knight through and through. Don't sleep on her love for the Tiger, right? But her loyalty to the Purple Tiger is deep. When we were going through an accreditation review, Dr. Grant was giving birth to her first child, literally while we were going through the accreditation review. She was giving birth to Jamie showed up in the middle of the visit for the accrediting body. So as you might imagine, having your vice president of academic affairs is a big deal during an accreditation visit because really what they want to know is are people learning the things they're supposed to learn? Well, you can't prove that if your vice president of academic affairs is having a baby and isn't here, right? So Dr. Grant's father, loaded her in the car, drove her here to sit there and answer all the questions that the accreditors had, and then took her back to, how, was Jamie two days old? Four or five? It wasn't a week. Okay. So Jamie's mom came to make sure that you all would have an opportunity to be here. Because if we didn't pass that, we would not be here right now. So you need to understand the depth of the love that people here have for this institution, and by extension, they have for you. So when we say we will fight for you, yes, we will fight for you. We will even put the child on the shelf for 15, 20 minutes to come make sure you're all right. So. When Dr. Grant yells at you about wearing your mask, when she gets on you about dress code violations and the work program 
and all the other things that come under her purview, see it through the lens of someone that makes great sacrifices for you to have an opportunity to be here, not as somebody yelling at you because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. So with that, I'm going to give you Jamie and Lauren's mom, Dr. Grant, who has been here now 11 years. Well, to, ah, she's been here so long. I, all I know is every day I come to work, she's here. So please join me in giving Dr. Grant a hand and welcoming her. Thank you. Sleep right. Good evening. Thank you, Press, for that introduction. Uh, like Dowdy says, we never know what Prez is going to say. I really never know what Prez is going to say, especially when he goes down uh, memory lane. Uh, and that little baby is uh, almost 11 and about five foot one. So, um, my name is Kiswanda Grant. I am the Chief Administrative Officer here at Paul Quinn College. On April 4th, 1872, the Connectional High School and Institute was founded by a small group of African Methodist Episcopal preachers in Austin, Texas, to educate freed slaves and their progeny. When the college's name was changed to Paul Quinn College in 1881, it was relocated to Waco, Texas, and it was on land that was once the old Garrison Plantation. There on the plantation was a bale that was used to alert, alert the enslaved people when it was time to head to the fields to work and when they could end work for the day. It was also used to alert the enslaved when it was time to eat or if danger was approaching. That bell now sits on our campus and it's called the Heritage Bell. It was relocated when Paul Quinn moved to Dallas in 1990 and now rests at the foot of the Paul Quinn Avenue of Roses. The bell, once a symbol of tyranny, of enslavement, and bondage, was transformed into a symbol of light and hope. Students touched the bell twice while in the Quinite Nation, once when they joined the nation and again during graduation week as they finished their journey. We recognize and affirm you, a new group of students who will touch the bell for the first time. And in this ceremony today, we charge you formally with forever remembering the 149-year history of sacrifices our ancestors made for you to have this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Grant. My name is Taylor Henley, and I am a class of 2012 graduate of Paul Quinn, and many of you enrollment management officer that probably got on your nerves. Sorry, but not sorry, guys. So in 2007, the college entered a new era symbolized by its institutional ethos of we over me and the four L's of Quinnite leadership, which are, as Prez stated, leave places better than you found them, lead from wherever you are, live a life that matters, and love something greater than yourself. This new era has resulted in numerous national honors, including being named 2011's HBCU of the Year, 2013's President of Higher Education Community Service Honor Roll, and 2012's HBCU Student Government Association of the Year. As Dr. Dowdy also stated, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Michael J. Sorrell, has also been selected three times as HBCU Male President of the Year and was recently recognized as one of the world's 50 greatest leaders by The Fortune Magazine. Additionally, Paul Quinn won the inaugural HBCU Battle of the Bands at South by Southwest in 2017. In March 2017, the college received its designation as the ninth federally recognized work college in the country. Paul Quinn has earned these accolades because we live each day by the four L's of Quinnite leadership and because we look forward to being agents of change in the global marketplace, starting with our own at 3837 Simpson Stewart Road.
Good evening, Quinnite. My name is Jessica Lara, Director of Alumni Affairs here at Paul Quinn College. The growth of the college for 149 years has been the result of strong and determined leadership with tenacity, a tireless spirit, and love for humankind. The college is committed to continuous growth and expansion as it moves forward into a new era of greatness one step at a time. Would the new members of the Quinnite Nation please stand? That would be you guys, new students. At this time, President Soro will lead you through the recitation of the Quinnite Creed. All right. Now, this part involves call and response. And what you're about to participate in is one of the great traditions of the black church. Black colleges come from the black church. Without the black church, there would be no black colleges. Our institutions were funded by black churches. They were believed in, they were staffed, they were supported from the time they began to now. Many of you will be the recipients of scholarships from black churches. You will be the recipient of gifts from black churches. So when we start this call and response process, I need you to understand that this is not about you. This is about over 200 years of legacy. So when you respond back, respond back as if you realize you are standing on the shoulders of folks who stood and did things and made sacrifices so we could all be here. Can we do that? That isn't going to cut it. Let's try it again. Can we do that? All right, let's get to the business. I stand before you ready to accept my place in the Quinite family. And you repeat. As a Quinite, I promise to embrace the ideals of servant leadership and will at all times. Only the highest degree of ethical practices, spiritual faithfulness, and financial responsibility. As a Quinite, I believe in the four L's of Quinite leadership. Leave places better than you found them. Lead from wherever you are. Live a life that matters. And love something greater than yourselves. As a Quinite, I pledge to uphold the standards of selflessness embodied by our institutional ethos of we over me. As a Quinite, I believe in making no small plans and will never allow a stumble to become a fall. As a Quinite, I believe in the beauty and strength of families and vow to always be a respectful mate and a loving parent. As a Quinite, I believe in the words of Isaiah 58, chapters 9 through 12, and commit to feeding the hungry, taking care of the needs of the troubled, and rebuilding old cities, roads, and houses. As a Quinite, I accept that greatness is a goal for myself, for my school, for my community, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to the Quinite Nation.
Please remain standing as we welcome Dr. Dowdy back to the podium. Quinites, I ask you to remain standing to wait for the instructions. And President Sorrell, we ask that you would take your place at the main door so you can lead the procession to the Heritage Bell. It's cool down outside now, so you won't be very hot. It's going to be fine. It's going to feel great. Please maintain social distance, and the same way you came in, please leave. Jessica Taylor will assist you. Take the mask off. Got it.
to me.
She left it on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>